Hi guys, and welcome to this breakdown of William Street by Kenneth Slesser and Beach Burial. I'm doing them today as a combo. I think moving forward and looking at the HSC and its structures, doing poems in combos are a definite benefit. You're probably doing it anyway. You'll start to work together with poems throughout the, throughout the term, throughout the year. But essentially, I've just tried to take what I've learnt uh, as a teacher, a tutor, HC marker, and a range of other little jobs and roles I've had within the education industry to um, come with something for you that uh, maybe might give you a bit of an advantage, maybe not, but listen to it and see, see what you think. So essentially, why we do the combo is that when it comes to the HSC, you'll generally get to reflect on two poems, usually of your choice. Sometimes they can be a bit tricky and just give you one of your choice and they'll give you one of the six set Kenneth Lesser poems. But for the most part, you'll get a choice. Some students might use three. I would probably stay away from using four. Again, it's a perspective thing. Some people might say it's great to show your, your range, a spectrum of analysis, but I don't think so. I think um, that Slesser just like any poet for that matter, uh, and their depth is so profound that you really can't get into the nature of the poem without deliberating it as such. And, you know, you, you can't you can't really get to the depths of Kenneth Slesser in a thousand words, which is what you're kind of practicing for, don't you see? This is, you know, look, I'm sure there's some kids out there that are in it for the lesson, in it for the memories and all the rest of it, and, you, you know, you're here to learn something. But if you're here to get some results, well, that's what I'm about. I'm about. Okay, getting the best results possible and, you know, using strategies and tactics that get you the best results. I Sometimes, probably bluntly, <laughs> without any filter, I say, um, you know, I put learning second and results first, but um, that's not always the way, but certainly I put results over learning. They are two different things, by the way. So, uh, let's have a look at William Street. Okay, so human experience is the area of study, the common module theme, if you wish. Area of study might be a dated term, but it works as well. So this poem uh, would be considered overdone by many, but I think it offers you, you know, scope. The ability to answer most questions with this poem, knowing, knowing that you won't know the poem potentially, makes this a safer option. And I like the sense of um, clarity that William Street brings, as opposed to Wild Grapes and the other poems, because... Like my head teacher says, he likes their ambiguity, but I don't. I don't at all like their ambiguity. You can play on that. You can play on the advantage of that by being ambiguous, a little, a little, but not too much. Then you come across as vague and tenuous in your essay. But um, yeah, I like the clarity this gives you. you know, There's a clear line here. Okay, so William Sweet, Human Experience. I'd stay away from the first line. I use it a lot in my analysis with my students and you know it's overdone a bit it's an easy one to start with okay red globe of light little green the red globe of light the little green that's a reference to king's cross there you go technique one referencing um it is a mild allusion to the to the actual suburb certainly slesser in his time was knowing to go against the grain regarding society and king's cross was a place of vagrants and those that are of alternate lifestyles and in saying that he appreciated that as much as it went against the grain almost doing it on purpose and in that regard well then the red globe of lights will be in the tail lights possibly or the lights that um, light up the night sky in a red light district hint hint and the little green okay alcohol money and drugs Thanks for a fun time. I'm just joking. So, you know, it, 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 it does play on that idea, okay? And there are so many human experiences starting with those that just, you know, want to do the simple essay and say, well, I like to be different, you know? But then there is the almost, not anarchist, but uh, the instigative, okay? Being a bit of an instigator, doing things that the others don't do, but more so appreciating what the others do do and not really be able to clarify in words and language. He um, he certainly validates his position in the coming par uh, stanzas, pardon me, and that's also very important. So let's have a look further down, okay? The pulsing arrows, personification, hello technique, and the running fire, personification, double up, okay? 
spilt on the stones, go deeper than a stream. Nice metaphor there. You find this ugly, I find this lovely. Well, of course, he juxtaposes the views of society versus him. But more so, he's right to have those views. That is the deeper human experience there. It's a comment on perception. This is my view. This is my how I perceive it. And this is my right to enjoy it. Ghost trousers like the dangle of hung men. Look, I've been told by many teachers before. That's a reference to um, the pawn shops, as in P-A-W-N, and the drugged up uh, individuals looking to get rid of uh, some items and take a hit. Right. Um, oh, look at that second line. In pawn shop windows, bumping knees by knees. But none inside, none inside to suffer or condemn. Big line there. But none inside to suffer. Look, you know, the point is very direct here. It's a direct point to you. Listen, this is my lifestyle. Okay, don't judge me. Okay, but at the same time, I don't really need your apathy either. Again, repetition. You find this ugly. Almost uh, foreshadowing there. I find this lovely. Okay. Again, you know, he's stand back, lay off. This is my perspective. Smells rich and rasping. Now, here we go. This is his forte. His forte. Rich and rasping, smoke and fat and fish. This is what we call tactile and sensory imagery. The touch, the smell, the sound. This has a profound connection to humanity and being human in every way because there are multiple experiences that that actually come together to to create this you know um very beautiful and unique and individual experience of being human and 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 this is how his astute ability in writing is, is, is clear. Smells rich and rasping, smoke and fat and fish, and puffs of paraffin that crimp the nose. You see I tell my students sometimes, walking through the cross when I was a younger person, um, enjoying my youth, they would never enjoy it like I did because there was no lockout laws. And of course, you know, we'd come out of the bars at like sunrise and have McDonald's at, you know, seven o'clock when the club finished. Well, you know, those are days long gone, but they actually had that, that lifestyle as a, as a trait was there many years before me and many years before McDonald's because there would be vendors with like, um, barbecues, you know, frying up food and, 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 and look, looking at the drunk um, publicans as they come out of the bar and eating their food. Because, of course, there's nothing like a greasy meal after a nice drink. And that's, that's the, again, these are all elements of, of humanity. The, the ones that are valued but never talked about somewhat bit, um, they're, they're, they're held low by society because it reflects an alcoholic culture and one of low morals. But these are wonderfully human experience experiences. Okay, They're wonderfully human in their nature and they are, I'd say, beautiful in how they are presented by this poet. So looking at that point, I would go with, um, if you look at tactile sensory imagery and we go smells rich and rasping as alliteration as, as well but the idea that one denotes this human experience through a personality or, or, or a um, personal trait of the ability to smell uh, uh, rather a human function okay that that you know we can s- smell these aromas, but then these aromas evoke a memory. This is the important bit. These aromas evoke a memory of time, place, our place in the world and at that time. It's a trigger. It's a physiological and psychological trigger, like from a scientific perspective, that's what smell does, right? It evokes that, but he uses that and takes it to the next level as a poet, playing on that idea. Because these experiences at one point will be forgotten and maybe relived just through our natural lives, through what we smell and see, and suddenly we get this sense of deja vu. Anyway, moving on, I I, I, I digress way too long these things. I try to keep it short and give you, um, you know, enough for an essay anyway. Well, I've, I've written about a thousand words, just some two or three lines before. So um, you, you can get there. I also do it as a conversation. You can see me just, you know, conversating rather than analyzing in the form of a teal, which I do for, for my classes. But I do that because then you can just take whatever you want, 
reproduce it whatever you want and it's fine otherwise if i did it two two by the book if i could use that phrase well then you might have two or three thousand kids that watch this like in previous years five thousand for the castle and and probably and potentially copy it word for word which i don't care that's cool <laughs> you do what you want but you know if, if i'm going to analyze it you can do whatever you like with them but you know there, there are probably rules against that so but again you know it's not a personal thing by me you can take as much as you want out of this but i do it this way so then everyone can take what they want out of it without anyone worrying about well you know maybe someone might you know have what i haven't had to see well <laughs> a lot of people will have what you have because most teachers teach the same concepts anyway but let, let, yeah anyway let's move on right next poem okay so i know it's 12 minutes in so you have to get a mosey on here um beach burial beach burial this is the right hook of my combo get the analogy there huh not bad eh uppercut was william street right hook was the beach burial that's a golden analogy folks anyway let's let's continue um beach burial is my second poem Softly and humbly to the Gulf of Arabs. Right. Um, this poem, you know, I love that first line. I know I just read it randomly, but this is, this poem works for me on so many levels. Much like William Street, it's the, the clarity is unmistakable. You know where he's going with this poem. You can be somewhat definite if you can say that about poetry in, in that context. It It is really, it is, yeah. It, these are the two main poems for me. Every day of the week for Kenneth Lesser. Every day of the week. I don't mind the Vespa song. I don't mind Gulliver. But out of time and wild grapes, you can keep that. Okay, because nope, not for me. Too ambiguous, too wishy-washy. Don't know where he's going. Probably don't care where he's going. So that's essentially how I see these texts. Um, let's continue on. Right, so... The main point for me is that the depth of this, again, I think is at a different level to most because, especially given the AOS, the area of study is human experience, well, this plays on that at a level which no other poem can because it questions the human experience as a living ideal. That is deeper than anything else. Okay, That is a concept that lies within philosophy. And if you want to do philosophy, you can push extension too, possibly. But, right... You can you can take the depth of wild grapes and all you or some people think it's so big and so deep. No, 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 no. This thing goes deeper than most, right? So if you want you if you're ambitious and you want it, go, go get it. This is where you get it. Okay. This guy questions the human experience in a way that it hasn't been questioned before, and he plays and he allows the experience of death as a human construct. Hmm. The one thing, and he is another profound philosophical statement, the one thing we know about life is you'll die. <laughs> you know, a bit dark and macabre, but yes, that's true. Is death a part of the human experience? You could have that as a rhetorical question in your essay. You could have that as a rhetorical question in your essay. Is death a part of the human experience? How do we deal with that? And and can we um, atone for that? Can we... Can we uh, build up <laughs> you can't you can't build death you can't you can't plan for it anymore i hope you don't um but <laughs> he takes it a step further he takes it even in the perspective of the dead you know with probably my fav my most favorite line of the whole poem is the one where they enlist on the other side you know and he creates this image of the of the soldiers all waiting to serve but they're all dead okay and rather than waiting in line to meet their maker, they're now waiting in line to meet their maker. <laughs> yeah, again, I'm being a bit tricky there. So and what I mean by that is tongue-in-cheek, you know, they waited in line to go serve their countries. They might have waited in line as a result of propaganda. Either way, they waited in line to do their duty. And now they're waiting in line. Or something else, okay, possibly in purgatory, waiting in line, and it, yeah, he 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 somehow bridges that that construct, yeah, human being being alive or being dead. Um, 
And again, the depth is profound. I don't have enough time to go through the depth of that concept, but we'll just go through this a bit more, okay? So um, the convoys of dead soldiers, uh, that, that, that paradox and that play on idea, well, they're not convoys because convoys are usually alive. Um, and the convoys, again, you know, plays on that um, whole image of the convoy are going to war. Well, no, the convoy is going to death. <laughs> you know, that's, that's again, this quite a confronting, juxtaposing, mildly paradoxical um, view of death. Okay? And look, a lot of, a lot of Wilfred Owen here, for those that know Owen, you know, lots of questioning the validity of war here. He, he questions that very clearly. Okay? A big question, why? Why? Okay? Because it, it is so confronting, it, 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 you know, there's only one way you can look at this and that he's not happy. You know, this is this is something that he would say that humanity should have taken a sidestep on. Let's not always fight. Maybe this is not the best way. I'm not saying he's not patriotic or anything, but certainly there is clear regress and a somber tone to this piece, not just because they're dead people, but because the nature of what war is. Continuing on, that's not sobbing the way you think it's sobbing, so it's not par- it's not a paradox there. Um, but definitely clubbing of gunfire is personification. It, he, he, he makes it human. Okay? He, he makes it a part of their lives like they're a compatriot. Someone, it seems, has time for this. <laughs> to pluck them from the shallows and bury them in burrows. Yeah. Do you see how flippant he is there? That's a, that's a tone shift. There's a very clear tone shift. Pluck them from the shallows and bury them in the burrows. Hmm? It's just, oh, yeah, take the leg, take the arm. That's someone's brother. That's your cousin. That's your, you know, just, there, there, there is, he, he actually now removes the human element. I'm just going to remove, I'm going to remove the humanity at this point and just put them as objects, like picking flowers. Hmm? See how flippant that was? That's a tone change there. Continue on. Oh, that's what I love this one. My favorite one, second favorite one. Upon their nakedness. Hmm. Nakedness? Well... Yes, they are vulnerable at all levels, okay? You think that youth are vulnerable? Yes, they are vulnerable, but not vulnerable like this. And the term nakedness is, you know, multifaceted. The, the, the levels that, the, you know, the word nakedness can break off into is profound here. Yes, they're vulnerable because they're naked. They're naked? Possibly. Or maybe they were exploited. Maybe they were used as pawns in a game of sovereignty and power, and then they are truly standing there naked in front of the king, the government, the policymakers that possibly sent them to war. And there they stand. Okay, um, moving on very quickly, it's getting close to 20 minutes. Damn. <laughs> This is why I don't teach this to my bottom year 12 class. <laughs> Unknown semen. Continue on anyway. Um, dead semen. Um, gone in search of the same landfall, whether as enemies they fought or fought with us. <laughs> I, I like that. Okay. Well, there we go. You know, <laughs> fighting, fought, we're all the same thing now. We're dead. Hmm? Do, you, do, you, do you see how it just brings it back there? He just says, look, hang on a second. Let's step back and have a look at this just for a moment. And of course, my favorite last line, enlisted on the other front. <laughs> Jeez, I, the first time I said it, um, I paraphrased clearly, but same point, beautifully put to end the poem, enlisted, big metaphor, big metaphor. Hmm? All right, guys, got to go, 20 minutes. I know, because you know your rate of um, being able to focus for that long on YouTube, too much clickbait. See ya, take care.